I'm Reggie Tongon, a lawyer by profession, TV host by advocacy. I'm William Theo. I am a journalist, a commercial model, and also a realtor. Join me and meet the mighty shakers and movers of society and be inspired by their amazing journey through life here on Spotlight. Mga kasang bahay, minsan it's nice to be able to prove yourself wrong. Katulad ng mga i-interviewin ko ngayong hapon na ito, yung una si Mr. Diego Castro, matagal ko na itong kilala. And he has changed so much. He has evolved as a person, as a family man, and also in his career. And it is wonderful to be inspired also by my other workmate who is a consultant, a host, and also a news anchor. This afternoon, let's find out more about their lives right here on Spotlight. Angelo Diego Castro III, nag-iisang anak ng veteranong journalist na sina Miss June Keithley at Angelo Castro Jr. Nakilala bilang isang aktor sa isang youth-oriented TV program noong 1999. Mayaman, sikat, teen heartthrob at kontrobersyal. Pero matapos ang ilang taon, ganito pa din ba si Diego ngayon? come from a uh, very uh, successful family. Mm -hmm. Both mother and father are uh, exceptional news anchors. So you grew up in the limelight. So how was your childhood like? Difficult. Because um, both parents were in the limelight. So mm -hmm. there was pressure on, on my part to, uh, to at least follow in their footsteps. Mm -hmm. Even if it wasn't, uh, if, even if hindi ko talaga hilig siya before. Mm -hmm. diba? So um, what my friends would say that uh, you're the son of Angelo and June. But what happened? I always get that. Mm -hmm. But what happened? So I dropped out of school uh, early on, and I was uh, finding my bearings. You know, I couldn't really fathom what I w wanted to do with my life. I grew up with my mom. Okay. I grew up with my mom. Uh, my dad was a movie actor, and they were separated at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was busy doing uh, TV shows, uh, Baltic and Company, and then he did a couple of movies. Wala pa siya sa news noon. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what it was like. Uh, rarely spent time with him mm -hmm. early on. I dropped out of college when I was uh, 19. Uh, I left home because I couldn't, I couldn't bear the fact that I had to tell my dad that I was out of school. I left home and when I came back, I had a talk with my mom and I asked my mom, could I take acting workshops? And she said, uh, fine, I'll send you to Mr. M. I go to ABS and then just looking for acting workshops and the next day he tells me, um, go back tomorrow, we're an Americana. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was for the acting workshop. Then when I stepped into the room the next day, he presented me as a Star Circle uh, first member, batch, batch two. One. For batch two. Batch two, batch for, two. For the summer. Okay. You get numb. Uh, yung advice na narinig mo from people na don't let it get to your head, that's not, that's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Kasi uh, fame numbs, numbs you. Eh. It's like an, an, an anesthesia. Mm -hmm. you, you tend to have this sense of uh, power. Uh, for example, uh, you ask, who, which director will I work with today? And then they will tell you the name. Uh, I'll be late, two hours. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Because you knew you were with gimmick, you knew you were with batch, you, you were in demand, mm. so you were the boss. That mm. was that was uh, that was uh, one negative uh, aspect to all of this. Raven was not the first person I was dating. You, uh, I think I love you. No, no. Okay. Anyway, it, it, uh, the first initial pairing was Dither and Raven. Uh -oh. They asked each other out, and then Bianca and I were just chaperones. Bianca, uh, Bianca. 30 days, Bianca. Oh, okay, okay, okay yes. We were, we, were merely <laughs> we were merely chaperones. And we were watching a movie, and uh, both Diet and Raven were just quiet and not talking, so I ended up talking to, to Raven. I wouldn't say love. Uh, I, I wouldn't know that time because, um, siempre, she, for me, she was still an artista. Hindi pa naka implant sa mind ko or heart ko na I was a celebrity. Okay. I always thought of myself at that point as. You know, a common person, but with a lot of capabilities and power in the hands. Okay. How did fatherhood change you? 
An honest answer would be, uh, it, it hardly changed me for the better initially, because mm -hmm. the primary concern was to hide the the baby. Oh, okay. at that time, because mm -hmm. um, you were young. Angelo got pregnant. And then, uh, if the public found out that Raven was also pregnant, the show would spiral out of control, it would close, it would shut down, and we would lose work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember clearly, Direct Mark called the entire cast. Uh, he said, Angelo is pregnant. If any one of you is pregnant, so help me God, I will let you know. Then he was angry. But I knew Raven was pregnant, so I sent her off to the States. And uh, quietly, I tried to smuggle her back in after she gave birth, but uh, it leaked out. I arrived about 3 a.m. in the airport and there's a whole bunch of reporters there, so mm. the cat was out of the bag. So I wasn't ready for to settle down and it's, okay. it, it's, it's, mm. it's, it's common knowledge in the industry that and I've admitted it multiple times uh, in saying that I was young then, I made my mistakes, but at that time I was not really ready to settle down. Right. I, had, I had issues with being loyal mm -hmm. and I've openly admitted that. When we return, I was a bottom feeder, you know, I'd feed off my, uh, my parents. I was surviving off them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I found, uh, I found Angel. Mm -hmm. And then everything, uh, everything started, uh, you know, smoothly. A lot of things were going my way. Um, started uh, praying again. Um, started doing good things, stopped all my vices. Good thing about that, and that's the reason why we're talking now. Is it was just actually a phase? Yes. Yung yung Jego na kilala, kilala ko ngayon, at least the one who I got to know better, it has has done a 180. Para bang you are a very responsible father, mm -hmm. a very good husband, a very good friend, and somebody who is in touch with reality. And at the same time, you still haven't lost that sense of idealism that is very important. So, ngayon, sa interview na ito, paano mo nagawa yun? Paano mo na link together to learn from your mistakes, to be able to still have the courage, the strength, to in, para lang ma-inspire yung mga ibang uh, mga televiewers natin, especially those who feel that they are not in control. It's as simple as uh, accepting accepting your mistakes. Okay. If you do not uh, accept what was or what is, mm -hmm. then you cannot change. And what made me accept all these mistakes was, number one, I was down and out in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I had nothing uh, from being on top, I was rock bottom. Nothing was going my way. I was a bottom feeder, you know, I'd feed off my, uh, my parents. I was surviving off them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I found, uh, I found Angel. Mm -hmm. And then everything, uh, everything started, uh, you know, smoothly. A lot of things were going my way. Um, started uh, praying again, um, started doing good things, stopped all my vices. Mm -hmm. Was it easier this second time around? It was a little easier because uh, I, the, I, I felt and I felt the worst was over. Mm -hmm. And definitely the worst was over. Uh, there were challenges and trials, uh, but uh, not as hard as the, the ones I've experienced in my earlier times. Diego finished culinary arts management in 2004. He is indeed following his dad's footsteps because aside from being an actor and broadcaster, the late Angelo Castro Jr. was also a chef. I'm still adjusting. It, it's difficult because uh, all my life, I'm an eh, artist. Ako eh. And I've won awards to prove that uh, I can act. And so I've, I've, I've taken a lot of uh, workshops that entail you to be uh, very sensitive to the surroundings. So that's, that's me by nature. I am a sensitive person. Doing the news in, requires you to be, to be serious. And uh, if an item is uh, funny, uh, I have difficulty controlling myself. If an item angers me, sometimes it shows in my eyes. And if I'm disgusted, it is often seen. But mm -hmm. it's a work in progress. I'm uh, trying to trying to correct that. But you know, you cannot. Cor I've been working since 1996 mm -hmm. on television, mm -hmm. uh, and this is the first time I've been asked not to show emotion. I'm still in the crossroads of uh -huh. making a permanent change because, mm -hmm. as you know, I've, I'm also under contract in another network, mm -hmm. and I have obligations to fill. Uh, acting, I'm doing my soaps, mm -hmm. and I feel I also enjoy also acting. At the same time, I. I feel that I've found something that I really enjoy doing, which was what my dad did mm -hmm. in doing the news. Mm -hmm. So sooner or later, I'm going to have to make a permanent uh, 
decision, choice, choice yeah. on what to take. Mm -hmm. If you want to be happy in life, you do not listen. It, it, as long as what you're doing is good, huh? you do not listen to what people say. Mm -hmm. It's important is you know in your heart what you were meant to do. Mm -hmm. I was earning six, uh, close a six-digit figure monthly in the corporate world, but I was depressed like, like you could not explain it. Mm -hmm. And then circumstances happened. I was given an opportunity to risk resigning from earning six digits a month to not knowing how many projects I would have in a span of one year. And I took that risk. And now I am completely happy. I don't earn as much, but I am completely happy. Uh, the Lord works in mysterious ways. All you have to do is listen to your heart and always do what, uh, you, think is, uh, you, what you think is proper and what you were meant to do. Diego believes that he surpassed the worst. Now he is blessed with a new family who accepted his past and helped him become a better man. Angela Lagunsad and their son, Mio.